Welcome to the Indian Council of Medical Research online prescribing course 2020 for the Indian medical graduate. I am Dr. Ratinder Jhaj and today I am going to talk about prescribing in ophthalmological disorders. After viewing this video, please access 5 MCQs based on this video and give a feedback. These can be found in the assignment section. The co-authors for this module are Dr. Ajay Shukla, Dr. Balakrishnan from Pharmacology Ames Bhopal and Dr. Bhavna Sharma from Ophthalmology also from Ames Bhopal who have helped me to prepare this module. This module has been reviewed by Dr. Pooja Gupta from Pharmacology Ames New Delhi. At the end of this module, we hope that you as a learner will be able to prescribe rationally for three common ophthalmological conditions that is conjunctivitis and vernal keratoconjunctivitis which we have covered in this lecture. Information about dry eye disease has been provided separately in the reference material which you can download as a PDF. We also hope that you will be able to communicate to a patient in simple language that he understands the appropriate method of installation of eye drops and the precautions to be followed while using eye drops. And most importantly, we hope that you will be able to refer the patient to a specialist if necessary for further management. Each condition will be covered with the help of a case scenario followed by brief information about the condition, key points in management, prescription for the case, when to refer and important do's and don'ts as applicable. In the end, I will show you some reference and reading material which will help you further to gain knowledge about these disorders. So let us begin with our first case. This is a 25 year old lady who has presented with a history of redness and grittiness of eyes with purulent discharge from both eyes leading to matting of eyelashes for the last 3 days. There is no history of pain or itching in the eyes, blurred vision or photophobia. What will be your tentative diagnosis? This is a case of conjunctivitis. I hope you can appreciate the hyperemia and the discharge in the eyes which has also led to some arrhythmia around the eyes. Now conjunctivitis is actually not a single disorder. It is a diverse group of disorders characterized by inflammation of the conjunctiva. It is very common in developing countries in all ages and social strata. Most type of conjunctivitis are self-limited but some lead to severe ocular and extraocular complications. Even in self-limited conditions, there is significant ocular morbidity and loss of workplace efficiency. Therefore, you should know how to approach a patient with suspected conjunctivitis. Here it is important to remember that not all red eye is due to conjunctivitis. A red eye which is painful with photophobia or blurring of vision could be due to keratitis, acute angle closure glaucoma or anterior uveitis. Such a case should be referred to an eye specialist on an urgent basis. On the other hand, a painless red eye with relatively normal vision could be due to conjunctivitis. In this case, there is usually a feeling of grittiness in the eye and discharge from the eyes. The type of discharge from the eyes can help you to decide which kind of conjunctivitis it is. If it is a hyperpurulent discharge, which means a copious thick pus like discharge, you could be looking at a case of gonococcal conjunctivitis, which again should be referred to an eye specialist urgently. If it is a mucopurulent discharge, this could be due to a non gonococcal bacterial conjunctivitis. A thin serous discharge without itching is likely to be due to viral conjunctivitis, while the presence of itching along with a thin serous discharge points towards a diagnosis of allergic conjunctivitis. So now let us look at our case again and see how we had reached the diagnosis. Now this lady had history of redness and grittiness of eyes with purulent discharge. There was matting of eyelashes. There was no history of pain or itching in the eyes, blurred vision or photophobia. Hence we had made a clinical diagnosis of acute bacterial conjunctivitis. Having diagnosed conjunctivitis, we need to look at how to manage it. Besides some general management, all cases of conjunctivitis are treated according to their etiology. In case of viral conjunctivitis, 
which is usually due to adenovirus, there is no specific antiviral therapy to be used. Topical antihistamines like amidastin, azelastin or olopatidin may be used. Some of them like azelastin and olopatidin have additional mast cell stabilizer action. In case of bacterial conjunctivitis, we can use broad spectrum antibiotic drops like chloramphenicol or fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin. In case of allergic conjunctivitis, we can use topical mast cell stabilizers like chromalin glycate and or antihistamines like amidastin or we can use drugs with dual action that is drugs with mast cell stabilizer and as antihistamine action as we had seen in the previous slide like azelastin and olopatidin. In addition for symptomatic relief if the patient has a feeling of dryness in the eye, we can also prescribe artificial tears or ocular lubricants. Preferably these should be preservative free. If there is no response within a few days, it is better to refer such a case to an ophthalmologist. Now we had talked about some general measures in a case of conjunctivitis. These are in the form of advice to the patient. We should advise a patient of conjunctivitis to wash hands frequently and keep them away from eyes, to use separate towels during the infection, to avoid close contact with other family members during the infection and if possible to use a clean pillowcase each night. In addition, application of cold compressors with a clean cloth or soft tissue paper can provide symptomatic relief. If a patient uses contact lenses, these should be avoided during an infection and in fact they should not be restarted till advice by the physician which may be you. In case the patient has used contact lenses during a bout of conjunctivitis, if possible these should be sterilized in a lab before the patient starts reusing them. Patients can also be advised to wear sunglasses when going out and also to avoid exposure to irritants and allergens which cause allergy for example pollen, animal fur or dust mite. Now let us prescribe for our first case that was a 25 year old lady with acute bacterial conjunctivitis. So as we have seen chloramphenicol is a good choice in such a patient. So we can prescribe eye drops chloramphenicol 0.5%, one drop to be instilled in both eyes every 2 to 4 hours during waking hours for the first 24 hours and then 6 hourly for 6 days making this a total of 7 days. Chloramphenicol is a broad spectrum topical antibiotic. It is one of the least toxic to the epithelium amongst all the uh, ocular or the topical antibiotics. At night the patient can be advised to apply ointment chloramphenicol one person in both eyes. In addition we have already discussed the general measures that you should not forget to advise to your patient as applicable and also call the patient back for review after 7 days. Now having prescribed antibiotics let us see a short video on what advice you can give to a patient or what instructions you can give to a patient so that the patient can put the eye drops themselves properly. So this is a video that you can watch yourself, learn and then convey the information to your patient. Steps for self-administration of eye drops or ointment. Many eye diseases require administration of eye drops or ointments. Patients need to be taught the correct technique of self-administering the eye drops for optimal therapeutic effect. This demonstration will take you through the correct steps for self-administration of eye drops or ointment which you can watch, learn and then convey the information to your patients. This will ensure that your patient is able to self-administer their eye medications properly, thus enhancing compliance and ultimately faster resolution of their symptoms. Wash your hands before administering any eye medication. Shake the bottle if indicated on the label. Remove the cap and keep it on a clean surface. Do not touch the dropper or tube opening. Tilt back the head or lie down and look upward. Gently pull the lower eyelid downward to form a pocket. 
bring the tip of the dropper or tube as close to the pocket as possible without touching it to the eye. Instill the prescribed number of drops in the pocket. If an eye ointment is used, place a quarter of an inch line of ointment into the pocket. Close the eyes gently for about 2 minutes. Do not shut the eyes too tight. Press your fingers against the inner corner of the eyes to keep the eye drops from going into the nasolacrimal duct. Excess fluid can be removed or wiped off with the tissue. Repeat the procedure with the other eye if required. Recap the bottle or tube immediately after use. Do not wipe or rinse the tip of the dropper or tube to avoid contamination. Wash your hands. If more than one kind of eye medications are to be used, wait for at least 5 minutes before applying the next medication. Eye medications may cause a burning feeling in the eyes, but this should not last for more than a few minutes. If it does last longer, consult a doctor. Store the eye drops or ointment in a cool dry place and do not use for longer than one month after the bottle is opened, unless otherwise stated on the label. Check the label on your eye drop or ointment to see if refrigeration is necessary. Remove any contact lenses before using eye drops or ointment and consult your doctor about how soon you can wear them after using an eye medication. It is important in any disease to know when you can not help the patient further and when you should refer a patient. In case of conjunctivitis, such patients should be referred, that is patients with ophthalmia neonatorum, which could be due to gonococci, chlamydia or herpes simplex virus. We need to refer these patients for specialist care of the neonate and also for advice and treatment of the parents. In addition, Patients with severe conjunctivitis not responding to treatment or when conjunctivitis appears to be a manifestation of an autoimmune disease like Reiter's disease should be referred. Also if there is prolonged persistent conjunctivitis with complications like psychiatrization or lead abnormalities these should be referred and cases of severe chemical conjunctivitis should be referred to an ophthalmologist. Some things to remember which you should not do for a case of conjunctivitis is do not prescribe antimicrobials or their combinations with steroids in viral or allergic conjunctivitis. Topical steroids should be prescribed only by an ophthalmologist and then too for a short period. Do not suddenly withdraw steroids if a patient is already on steroids. Do not prescribe oral antihistamines which may actually worsen allergic conjunctivitis. So these are some things that you should remember not to do for a patient of conjunctivitis. Now let us come to our second case. This is a 12 year old boy who has presented with history of recurrent episodes of burning and itching of the eyes, photophobia and lacrimation with stringy discharge during summer season for the last two years. What is the likely diagnosis here? This is a case of vernal keratoconjunctivitis which is also known as vernal catar. Vernal keratoconjunctivitis is a recurrent bilateral allergic conjunctivitis. It is a common ocular surface disorder in India. It is most commonly seen in young children and adolescents, usually boys. Peak occurrence is at onset of summer. Chief symptoms of VKC are bilateral burning, itching of the eyes, photophobia and lacrimation. It usually has a self-limiting course but can cause corneal complications leading to decreased vision. So an Indian medical graduate should be able to start treatment and refer the patient to an ophthalmologist for chronic care. Coming back to our case, so this is a 12 year old boy which fits with the usual clinical picture of adolescent boys being affected by the disease. There is a history of recurrent episodes, burning and itching of the eyes, stringy discharge and onset during summer. All these fit with the diagnosis of vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Management of vernal keratoconjunctivitis is done in a step ladder approach. This means that we start with a single drug 
this may be topical mast cell stabilizers or antihistamines or drugs with mast cell stabilizer and antihistaminic action. If these are not enough, then we add artificial tears, ocular lubricants, preferably preservative free if required for symptom relief. If required for children, we can also add oral antihistamines for short periods. If symptoms still persist, we can add topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, decongestants or steroids, but these should be prescribed only by an ophthalmologist. There are some general measures to be remembered for treatment of vernal keratoconjunctivitis. A patient should be advised to avoid rubbing the eyes to use sunglasses or tinted glasses when going out to apply cold compressors to the eye which provides symptomatic relief. Now let us prescribe for our patient with vernal keratoconjunctivitis who was a 12 year old boy. So we can prescribe eye drop olopatidin 0.1 percent one drop to be instilled in both eyes two times a day for seven days. In addition, we have to advise general measures especially to avoid rubbing the eyes. If possible, the patient should be advised to consult an eye specialist in the future. Some things to remember not to do for a patient of vernal keratoconjunctivitis are similar to things that we had seen not to do for conjunctivitis. This includes not to prescribe topical antibiotics or steroids in VKC. If required, these should be prescribed by an ophthalmologist. Also, do not suddenly withdraw steroids. This means that if a patient is already on steroids, we should not suddenly withdraw them. This is common to all conditions. You know, if a patient is on steroids, if we suddenly stop them, there might be problems of rebound disease. Also remember not to prescribe steroid antimicrobial combination eye drops for a patient of VKC. These are some reference and reading material which you may find useful as you prepare for these disorders. In the end, I would like to acknowledge our RUMC members of AIMS Bhopal, especially Dr. Bhavna Sharma who has given her expert advice as well as patient photographs. And also I would like to acknowledge Dr. Ajay Shukla, Dr. Malainanda, Dr. Praveen and Dr. Shah Nawaz who helped in making the demonstration video on application of eye drops. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you are now ready to attempt the MCQs. Please download the MCQs from the assignment section, answer and submit them. Please also complete the prescription evaluation as per the tutorial which I hope by now you have already seen. Thank you and happy learning.